morning and howdy everybody hey as we read through the bible together in 2023 y'all grab your bible you saw the title of this video before you opened it and started listening it's got what i'm reading today the book and the chapter number so you gotta get your bible and read with me and remember what the bible t tells us thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee, O oh God? We need this word in our mind, in our heart, all the time. God hates sin. He will put people in hell for all eternity for unrepented sin. So you need to get that stuff out of your life, friend. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he will save you from your sin. He has already saved you. You just got to believe. And to believe that takes faith. And God gives you the faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Time is running out. I ain't lying. Look at stuff going on in and around Israel. Friends, if you know even that much prophecy in the Bible, you know that we are living in the last days. Everything, it, everything's happening. Everything is happening. All right. Joshua, no, we're done with Joshua. We're in Judges. Chapter 7 of Judges. <clears throat> Let me get a sip of coffee here. I've been up a long time. I've been, I've got all my chores done. I'm dressed, ready to go outside and start working on whooping this yard back in shape. It's still cold outside. I'm still wearing long sleeve shirts and it's still cold outside, but the grass and weeds, I ain't got no grass. I, I just got a bunch of, I got a yard full of weeds and they decide to grow even though it's still cold. So I got to get the tires on my garden tractor aired up and get that thing running out there. I got my flowers all planted now. I got my vegetables all planted. I, my vegetables are doing good. I don't know how they grow in this cold weather, but they're growing. They ain't no vegetables yet, but they're blooming. Some of them are blooming. Potatoes are coming up. Garlic is coming up. Everything's looking good. Peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, I think that's all I got. I, I, I don't know what I got. But anyway, let me get to reading the Bible here. And I bundle up like an Eskimo when I go outside. Judges chapter 7. Then Jeroboam, who is in who is Gideon. Y'all know the Gideon Bibles you see in the motel rooms? This is the Gideon that those Bibles are named after. He he is in the Bible. He was a good guy. And before I started carrying my own Bible everywhere, I was always thankful when I checked into a motel and saw a Gideon Bible in there. And there's some motel still has them that. Extended stay hotel I stayed in for three and a half months after I sold my house in Texas. I had a Gideon Bible. I had my own. I had, uh, I think I had three of my Bibles with me in that motel room or hotel room, whatever kind of room it was. But there's Gideon Bible too, and I like seeing those. And I have heard stories of people that got saved by reading the Gideon Bible in the motel room that they were staying in. Anyway, chapter 7 of Judges, then Jeroboam, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. Sounded like a good place to camp out, doesn't it? And Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give to the Midianites into their hands. 
lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now, therefore, go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. I bet you never heard a military order like that before, did you? I, I know I never did, except right here. All right, let me keep on going here. And there returned of the people 22,000, and there remained 10,000. So 22,000 people was too afraid, but there remained 10,000. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. I hope y'all can see me. I just noticed my shirt and the wall and that door back there, we're all the same color. Here I am camouflaged again. Well, you can hear me whether you can see me or not. Maybe you can see my ball head. It's a little bit different color than the wall in my shirt. So he brought down the people unto the water. That's talking about Gideon. Brought people down to the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them, let me go back and reread that verse again. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth him, shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. Period. End of sentence. It seemed like that sentence should keep going, but it doesn't. Verse 6, And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were of three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. Hmm. If you're going to war, which way would you be drinking water? I'd be bringing the water up to my mouth so I could keep my eyes looking about. Not kneeling down and lapping like a dog where all you can see is the water right at the end of your nose. <clears throat> Verse 7, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand and let all the other people go, every man into his place. So the 32 or 42,000 people that started out, they're down to 300 to fight this war. But it's 300 that God chose. So you know where everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Verse 8, so the people took victuals in the hand and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent, and retained those 300 men, and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. In other words, it's fixing to hit the fan. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise. Get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. They hadn't even had the war yet, and God's already telling him that the victory is his. <laughs> because God is with them, y'all. That's how God rolls. Verse 10. 
But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Fura, thy servant, down to the host. And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Fura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand by the sea for a multitude. That's a lot, y'all. That verses 300... And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, <clears throat> Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a, <clears throat> a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along. And his fellow servant, his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the host. The war hadn't even begun, and God has already delivered the victory into Gideon's hand. <clears throat> Same thing with whatever war is going on in your life, friend. You have friend. You have faith that God is going to win that war for you. Claim it and go for it. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshiped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Past tense. The Lord has already done it. All you got to do is go out there and claim it. And he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps <coughs> <coughs> and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise, and behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with the trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch and they had but newly set the watch and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands and the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal and they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the hosts ran and cried and fled. And the 300 blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host, and the host fled to Bethshedah, and Syriath, and to the border of abel Mahola unto Taboth. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali, and out of Asher, and out of all of Manasseh, and pursued after the Midianites. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites, and take before them the waters of Beth Barah and Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters of Beth Barah and Jordan. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, and they slew Oreb upon the rock Oreb and Zeb they slew 
at the wine press of Zeb and pursued Midian and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side of the Jordan. Hang on just a minute. Thank you. Chapter 8. And the men of Ephraim said unto him, Why hast thou served us thus, that thou callest us not, when thou wentest to fight with the Midianites? And they did chide with him sharply. And he said unto them, What have I done now in comparison of you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abiezer? God hath delivered into your hands the princes of Midian, Oreb, and Zeb, and what was I able to do in comparison of you? Then their anger was abated toward him when he had said that. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him faint yet pursuing him. And he said unto the men of Succoth, Give, I pray you, loaves of bread unto the people that follow me, that, for they be faint, and I am pursuing after Ziba and Zalumna, kings of Midian. And the princes of Succoth said, Or the hands of Ziba and Zalumna, now in thine hand, that we should give bread unto thine army. And Gideon said, Therefore the Lord hath, past tense, hath delivered Seba and Salumna into mine hand. Then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. And he went up thence to Penuel and spake unto them likewise. And the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Succoth had answered him. <coughs> And he spake unto us, and he spake also unto the men of Penuel, saying, When I come in again, when I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalumna were in Korkor, and their host with them about 15,000 men all that were left of the host of the children of the east, for there fell a hundred and twenty thousand men that drew sword. Y'all, I ever wonder, I mean, I always wonder when reading stories like that in the Bible, whose job was it to sit there and count how many people? They always tell you how many people it was. But who sits down there and counts so that they can put it in the Bible how many was there? I wouldn't want that job because people usually don't sit still. They're wiggling around like ants on the ground. And Gideon went up by the way of them that dwelt in tents on the east of Nova and Jogbeha and smote the host, for the host was secure, was past tense. And when Ziba and Salumna fled, he pursued after them and took the two kings of Midian Seba and Salumna, and discomfited all the host. And Gideon the son of Joash returned from battle before the sun was up, and called a young man of the men of Succoth, and inquired of him. And he described him, unto him the princes of Succoth, and the elders thereof, even three score and seventeen men. That's sixty, seventy-seven men. And he came unto the men of Succoth and said, Behold, Seba and Salumna, with whom ye did upbraid me, saying, Or the hands of Seba and Salumna now in thine hand, that we should give bread unto thy men that are weary. And he took the elders of the city, and the thorns of the wilderness, and briars, and with them he taught the men of Succoth. And he beat down the lower, the, uh, he beat down the tower of Penuel, and slew the men of the city. Then said he unto Seba and Salumna, What manner of men were 
they whom ye slew at Tabor? And they answered, As thou art, so were they. Each one resembled the children of a king. And he said, They were my brethren, even the sons of my mother. As the Lord liveth, if ye had saved them alive, I would not slay you. And he said unto Jether, his firstborn, Up, and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared, because he was yet a youth. Then Zeba and Salumna said, Rise thou, and fall upon us, for as a man is, so is his strength. And Gideon rose, and slew Zeba and Salumna, and took away the ornaments, that were on their camels' necks. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hands of Midian. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you, that ye would give me every man the earrings of his prey, for they had golden earrings, because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, We will willingly give them. And they spread a garment, and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, besides ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian, and beside the chains, beside the chains that were about the camel's necks. And Gideon made an ephod thereof and put it in a city even in Ophrah, and all Israel went thither, a whoring after it, which thing became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more and the country was in quietness forty years in the days of Gideon. And Jeroboam, the son of Joash, went and dwelt in his own house. And Gideon had threescore and ten sons of his body begotten. That's seventy. That's a lot of sons. For he had many wives. And his concubine that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son whose name he called Abimelech. Remember that name. And Gideon the son of Joash died in a good old age and was buried in the sepulcher of Joash's father in Ophrah of the Abiyas, Abir, Abizrites. And it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again and went a-whoring again after ba Baalim and made Baal-bereth Baal their god. And the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God, who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side, neither showed they kindness to the house of Jeroboam, namely Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had showed unto Israel. I, I don't understand Israel. We, It is God's chosen people, his chosen country. We are commanded in Genesis to pray for them. So we better be praying for him. I just don't understand them. 
that's it y'all this video is a little bit longer because I did a lot of but I hope it helps you it helped me getting it out of my mouth sharing it with you so I hope you have eyes to see and ears to hear friends and a heart that is receptive to the word of God that's what we all need that's what I pray for for every one of you I love y'all. I appreciate y'all, and I'll be back. It's too cold to work outside, but I got to work outside a little while. I got my work clothes on already. I even got shoes. I'm not running around barefooted like I usually am when I do my videos. All right, y'all. You can't see my feet, so it doesn't matter. I love y'all. See y'all later unless we get raptured out of here and, and friends uh, we really that rapture could happen any minute but we are that close we are that close look at what's going on in the middle east goodness gracious prophecy is being fulfilled and there ain't much prophecy left that's not fulfilled friends it's just about all done. Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. Stop worrying about the piddly stuff on earth because the piddly stuff on earth is about to pass away. We are close. We are very close. God bless you, friends.